So we're continuing our process of building our order fulfillment workflow for Bob's widgets. And our workflow here looks like it's gone great. Everything is green. The, we shipped off a widget, we reordered a widget, everything's green, you know. The problem is sometimes when you look under the hood, everything is green, but not everything's working exactly the way we wanted it to. So let's look at our input output here. And if we look at our input output, it shipped, but the reorder failed. Even though everything is green, that we missed a, a test condition where what happens if the API for the reorder fails? Conductor can take care of this. We just need to implement it into our workflow. So let's do that now so that we don't have this issue in the future. The first thing that we're gonna do in our workflow is we're gonna add a term to our workflow saying failure workflow, shipping failure. So if our workflow fails for any reason, this shipping failure workflow will be called. So if there's a timeout, anything, this failure work, shipping failure workflow is gonna be run. Let's look really quickly at the shipping failure workflow. This is a very simple workflow. Again, it just has one task, it's an HTTP task, and it's sending a Slack message. So we're using the Slack API to say, hey, your Bob's widget order fulfillment workflow has failed, and here are the reasons why. And you can actually see that in the text, we can send the workflow ID, and we can also send the reason. I'm not gonna scroll over because there's a secret key here in my URL, um, but you get the idea. This is gonna send a message whenever the workflow fails so that we know that something has happened. Even with this failure, we still wouldn't have known that there was an issue because, because this workflow worked, right? It just has the wrong message here. So we need to instrument our workflow to handle this error message from the, from the uh, RESTful API when we reorder the widgets. So what we're gonna do to do that is we're gonna add a switch task. A switch task takes in the data and depending on the case, it analyzes the data and depending on the case will do different things. The switch task in this case is going to take in the response from the reorder widget and then look at the actual parameter. You can do a couple things here. You can use JavaScript, et cetera. In this case, we're saying just use the parameter that comes in from the switch case. And <clears throat> if it says order failed, we're going to follow this path. If the order worked, we're going to go this path. Changing the way the workflow works depending on the parameters of one of the tasks upstream. And if the order failed, we're going to call a terminate task. And a terminate task does exactly what you expect it would do. Um, it stops the workflow. In this case, the terminate fail task is also going to change the status to failed. So since the order failed, we're going to call the workflow failed and we'll send a Slack message letting us know that, hey, the order failed, you know, you need to do something to rectify that issue. The default case is, hey, the, or, the widget was ordered. It's also going to call a terminate task, but in this case, the termination was completed. And so now we've built into Conductor all of the failure parameters. So if the workflow fails for any reason, we're gonna get a Slack message. If the order reorder failed, we're also gonna get a Slack message. And this is all built in, you just have to instrument it into your workflow to make sure that you can handle that order handling. In our next post, we're gonna start looking at versioning and how we can create different versions of our workflow all running in production at the same time.